it is quite possible that the failed impeachment of the Deputy Governor of Siaya County, Bona William Odor, may be something very boring to you. So what? It doesn't matter. Very small thing in our politics compared with the other things which are happening, like the finance bill. But please allow me a few minutes to prove you wrong. The issue was not that the impeachment bill in the Senate failed. No. The issue is what happened so that it failed. And what was happening in the Senate as it failed. Bila Kizungumingi, what was happening is that members before they went in to vote were receiving calls from state house okay now that is a very very big deal because if voting on the floor has to be influenced by instructions yeah based on threats or bribes from state house then there's no need of having a parliament why have a senate why have the National Assembly? What for? And indeed, ukweli mtupu, that is the reality. We don't have a legislature. We don't. And therefore what we have is an executive dictatorship. That is not coming. That is not something which will happen next month or next year. It is what we have. And that is the reason why the finance bill passed. By the way, if you stick with me till the end of this video, I am going to make a mind-blowing prediction that we are already seeing signs of, yeah, based on something I'm calling the overwhelming of a person's conscience. Conscience burnout. My apologies that I keep on referring back to my political lecturer. But that was the foundation of my political education. Now, the old man used to tell me very many times when I asked him a question about corruption, why he didn't do this? Why, for instance, he didn't look the other way? When some very powerful people were doing corruption under his watch, people so powerful that they could destroy him with the stroke of a pen, people so powerful that they would organize for his assassination, yeah, which at one point they did, and was scared for his life, I would ask him, why? Why not save yourself and just look the other way? His reply always puzzled me. He would put his hands, both of them, on top of his head and say, my conscience cannot allow it. And he would always say that with his eyes closed. And I never understood. Yeah. Until I got old and wiser. And therefore I would totally understand. Most of us on this channel. Not understanding it. And what I'm going to cover. Is how some people are going to be exposed. By failed consciences. Yeah. A conscience has been overwhelmed. It has burnt out. It can't take it anymore. It can't take the guilt anymore. And therefore, a person decides kuropokwa, to tell the truth and ignore the consequences because they're also involved. Look out for that one. It is in the category of pasia maka. Okay? But for now, I wanted us to focus, starting with this CIA Deputy Governor Manenos, I wanted us to focus on the tactics, strategies, inner secrets of William Samoy Ruto that got him to the presidency yeah, and that he still uses today and what those same tactics and strategies are doing to the country because we all know if a strategy helps you to achieve A it is impossible to achieve B using the same strategy and after a door we will look at what really happened at Bombers last August in a bit more detail than we have done in the past. Yeah, and we're still on the same topic. 
strategies and strengths of William Samoy Ruto that helped him achieve certain things, which unfortunately right now, because you can't remove the spots from a leopard, are damaging the country called Kenya very badly. The first very shocking thing we all need to understand about what happened at the Senate is that what members say, what we see them saying in the media, on social media with those clips, is not how they ultimately vote. Now that one is very significant. Indeed Kenyans got a glimpse of this with the voting of the finance bill, yeah, where the voting was made public, most of it. What members say, playing to the gallery, for us to hear, for their constituents to hear, is not how they ultimately vote. And in most instances, they end up voting the way they do as a result of a call from State House. Folks, we Kenyans are in trouble. Very serious trouble. To break it down for you, it means that Parliament kwisha maneno. And what we have in Kenya today is only one decision maker. One. The executive. Okay? What the executive decides, upende usipende. That is how it's going to be. Let's face the reality. Let's not pretend. Tafadhali tuambieni ukweli. Which brings us to the other strength of Ruto. Networking. You identify individuals, key individuals, who can make things happen. Starting from the obvious ones. The chairman of the IEBC. Because the law says, the chairman of the IEBC is the one who announces the winner of the presidential elections. By law, what the chairman announces is the result. You can always fiddle around with the figures to confirm what he has said. But the key thing is what the chairman says. Okay? From that to other smaller officials and people in positions, not necessarily the head, but people who can make things happen. For example, individual members of parliament and senators belonging to Azimio and governors too. Let us focus a little on exactly what happened in Siaya. Behind the scenes, of course. A deputy governor decides to report his boss. Now, please, let's focus here. The guilt or the lack of guilt in the boss is not the issue here. The issue here is insubordination. Yeah. Unless you've been living in Mars or outside this planet, that will sound very familiar to you. Because it is what Kenyans were treated to starting in 2018 when we had a deputy president who decided to constantly report his boss in subordination. And with the benefit of hindsight today, we know, all of us, those of us who want to know, because there are some of us who are blind, we don't want to know. We are affiliated to one side of the political divide, and therefore we don't want to know anything that is against that side of the political divide. For those of us who want to know, it is very obvious that what he was reporting about his boss was not all true. A lot of it was lies. You know it is human nature when you want to bring somebody down. Unachanganya ukweli na uongo. Nyingi na kwa uongo. Yeah? You take a few facts, but then you blow them up with a lot of lies. White lies. Okay? To get your objective. Or to get what you want to happen. To happen. So this deputy governor starts reporting his boss in Siaya. And he doesn't care. He doesn't want to listen to his party bosses. He doesn't want to listen to anybody. And he moves forward with a lot of momentum. Okay? Now, here you need to ask yourself the question. Was this man acting alone? Or was there a force behind him? That's a very important question to ask. Very important. And here I need to give you some information that I have. 
mainly because of the industry I am in. I'm in the media. Simply put, let me say this. You're a deputy governor in any county in Kenya. And you have these wild allegations against the governor. Just try and approach the media and see what kind of coverage you're going to get. It will be difficult to penetrate. But Bonaudul penetrated with ease, very easily. Suddenly was on national television, talking the things he was talking. You think that happened by accident? You think that happened without anybody backing him? <laughs> think again if you're thinking like that. Bottom line, the force that was behind Deputy Governor Odor is the force that saved him at the Senate and is the same force behind him even now as he has made peace, as he tells us, and as he goes back to Siaya, you can be sure this force is still operating in Siaya. And it is very obvious who is backing him. And he's still backing him. Yeah. We are talking about the great strength of Ruto in networking, getting to people. Even if they are not the boss, even a deputy can get things done. And the final question I want to ask you, the entire Kenya Kwanzaa fraternity votes to save this as a mere deputy governor. Okay? Why? Why should they care? Answer that question for yourself. Because if Kenya Kwanzaa were not behind it, then they should have voted for the man to be removed so that the influence, the appointment of the next deputy governor, or if not, so that they create chaos within the CIA county government. Yeah, because you have a deputy governor who has been removed, it is the perfect opportunity for you to go in as an opposing political force and create chaos. But then they don't do that. They save this deputy governor. But let us assume you don't believe anything I've said. Okay? Up to this point, you don't believe anything. Kenya Kwanza were not involved with this deputy governor until the case got to the Senate. Okay? Now, politically speaking, when you as a political force save me who is a deputy governor, yeah, you're not the political party I'm affiliated to. You're not the political grouping I'm affiliated to. But you have saved me. Yeah. How am I going to respond? Say you give me a call before the voting and you tell me. We are ready to save you. But we want you to do one, two, three, four. And I agree. And you save me. When I go back to Siaya, what am I going to do? Am I going to do what you told me to do? Or am I going to ignore you? Answer those questions for yourself. Because they are very important. Now, if you can allow me to remind you, we saw the same trends, yeah, the same telltale signs with the felling of the BBI initiative, Building Bridges Initiative. Again, with the benefit of hindsight, we know that the Building Bridges Initiative was good for Kenya. Indeed, Kenya Kwanzaa agrees because they implemented <laughs> many of the things that were in the BBI. For instance, we now have a chief cabinet secretary. However, William Ruto decided that the BBI had to be destroyed, had to be brought down. So we must ask, what was his main motivation? In my opinion, and I believe anybody would have acted the same, the main issue he had with the BBI was that it was going to reduce the powers of the president. Yeah? It was going to water down the executive by introducing more members into the executive. And with more members in the executive, we would not be having the problems we are having today of a parliament that does not exist, a parliament that is a rubber stamp, a voting machine. It does not have a brain of its own. Its brain is in state house. And so networking kicked in. Somebody very powerful in the judiciary was talked to. Okay? 
somebody who could get things done and the rest is history which brings us to the other strength of William Ruto propaganda twisting the facts to support his agenda now we're told the BBI was bad because it created it was all about people creating new positions for themselves and their cronies you know propaganda is very effective yeah and telling half truths which are lies is very effective in politics if you can get people to believe what you're saying and Kenyans are gullible I'm sorry to say this but it's the truth we're almost blind we just swallow 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 yeah like small eaglets they just open their mouths food is put into it without them thinking we swallow lies very easily and so that when we swallowed we don't want more positions created fast forward to the present we are told don't go to mandamano because those people organizing it their children are safely at home now hold on a minute one person who has been at the forefront of this mandamano is a young lady called Winnie Odinga, the daughter of Raila Odinga. <laughs> Folks, propaganda works until you open your eyes to see the naked truth. And so the propaganda that has followed the Manenos in Siaya, and even more propaganda we should expect in the coming days and weeks, is that Governor James Orengo is corrupt. Okay? And that one, many Kenyans have swallowed hook, line, and sinker. But this is what I want to say. Or rather, it's a question I want to ask. Which governor in Kenya is not corrupt? And I'm not excusing corruption. Yeah, that's not my point. My point is, as we talk about how Governor Orengo is so corrupt, why don't we talk about all the other governors and their corrupt ways? Or is the whole objective just to focus on Orengo because of his position in Azimio and do a lot of character assassination on Orengo? Yeah. Most of it ignoring facts. Most of it without any evidence. Actually, that seems to be the objective. By the way, even as I've said all governors are corrupt, the vast majority, virtually all of them actually, yeah, Show me evidence that Governor Orengo is corrupt. Just show me the evidence. There is none. There is no solid evidence we have been given. Okay? All that has happened is that the spotlight has gone into the Siaya County government. And we have been told things. Period. There is no evidence that can stand up in a court of law. Others, I can assure you, Orengo would be in court today facing charges of corruption. So why is he not there? The simple answer, there's no evidence. All this is propaganda. All this is political games. And so today we can clearly see what happened at MoMA's last August. Networking with the right people. And when the right people were in the bag, that election was gone even before the venezuelans came in to work on the figures that election was already lost for the people of kenya not even as mio the vast majority of people because the vast majority voted as mio we all know that that's the truth so when you have the key people a few key people on your side including the person in charge of the servers the real election results in the servers will never come out. You'll only get a glimpse through a whistleblower. We are Liponyoka. Yeah, I don't know how, but that one escaped the net. Yeah, because there was a net tied very tightly to support Ruto in that election. And in your networking, you have the chairman of the IEBC. And also you have the judiciary. Game short. The case goes to the Supreme Court. And I want to remind you. You dear bloggers were predicting. Were predicting the verdict of the Supreme Court. 
even before the presidential elections. Just go back in your social media account and you'll see the evidence there for yourself. So how did these UDA bloggers know what was going to happen? Are they prophets? Are they fortune tellers? Or how else did they know? How did they get that information? Which, by the way, panned out. It proved to be 1,000% correct. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Networking. And getting to the right people. You don't need to get through to too many people. Just a few people in the right positions. And then, of course, you promise them heaven on earth. And then what you do, you give them a down payment yeah, to show that you're truthful. To show that you'll stand up to your end of the bargain. Deal done. But the result of all this is that that country of yours called Kenya ends up in a total mess. Because how will this propaganda help our economy? It won't. You can do your propaganda... But the economy will expose you. The shilling is losing value to the dollar. Continues to do so daily. Okay, you can't hide that. No propaganda can fix that. How will networking help you? Now that you're the president. How will it help you? It won't. Kenyans continue to suffer. The reality is gloomy. Now the result of all this is that the people who are networked and the people who helped William Samoy Ruto to be president, all these people have a conscience. And granted, some people, their conscience died a long time ago. They do things and everything is okay. They sleep well at night, they don't even think twice about it and what they've done. They don't even see the suffering of Kenyans. Their conscience is dead. However, you will always find a few people who their conscience says, uh -uh. Mm -mm. no, no, ni machine door. I'm overwhelmed. I'm defeated. You know, I don't watch many movies. But recently I took in a movie where a man had his conscience overwhelm him. And it was a very sad state of affairs for this man. He abandoned his family. He stopped caring. He stopped even caring about his appearance. He started living on the streets. Yeah. His conscience overwhelmed him. And guess what he did finally? Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. And he attempted self-harm. Luckily he survived. And then guess what he did next? He decided to tell the truth. Yes, he was involved in this wrongdoing. Yes, he was there. In fact, a lot of the wrongdoing was done to protect him. Because he messed up. But he decided to tell the truth. To release that pain in his conscience. And therefore he exposed himself and he exposed others. Folks, that is exactly what is about to happen in the country called Kenya. Please mark this video and refer back to it when it doesn't happen. And hold me to account. Because I am sure, based on the information I have, indeed knowing what I know today, it has already started happening. You see, this thing called conscience was put there by Almighty God for a reason. We all have it. Yeah, we do things and then we regret later. And in most instances, it affects us for the rest of our lives. Something we did that was wrong. It keeps on haunting us forever until you leave this earth. When you have your conscience overwhelm you, I can assure you, it is not a comfortable feeling. It is a terrible feeling. And that is why today I can totally understand why my political lecturer, whenever he started talking about his conscience, would put both his hands on his head and he would close his eyes 
And they would say, my conscience will not allow it. My conscience will not allow it. I totally understand today. Ogopa your conscience. Fear your conscience. And the UD administration, fear this thing which is in the brain of the people who helped you do the evil you did and the evil you are still doing. One day, itakata. For sure. And that day, my friends, <laughs> is sooner than you think. But for now, we are stuck. We are stuck with the dead economy. We are stuck in a situation where we should expect, in the next few weeks, hyperinflation. Yeah? We are stuck in a situation where we should expect things to get much worse before they even start getting better. And therefore, I will not stop reminding you, please prepare yourselves. Don't just sit there doing nothing. Please do something. Yeah? Of course, you don't have to purchase my sets of videos. That will be a great help to you to map a way forward, to have a plan to survive what is coming. Indeed, what is already here. You don't have to. But please have a plan. And if you need a little help, the videos are available. You can see the details on your screens right now. Yeah. And then, of course, the big advantage is that you'll also get one year subscription to my weekly intelligence briefings. And I believe by now, most of you have received that highly sensitive information I promised in my last video about the reason why a very senior, powerful cabinet minister in the Kenyan government, the Kibaki regime, was banned from ever entering the United Kingdom. It is just mind-blowing information. The human conscience. The human conscience burning out. That is the reality Kenyans are about to see with their own eyes. And what you'll hear people say will make your ears ring. What you'll hear people saying, Utaenda kulia kwa cho. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.